Hello, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Blackjack Pack. It's your boy, Ryan the Rated R. Oscar, you know what it is. I'm here with my brother, Parks. I'm here with my brother, Play. And I'm really happy to be here today. But before we get to that, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and follow wherever you're watching or listening to the Blackjack Pack. We see all the people that are subscribing to the channel. Thank you. All the people following us on Spotify. Thank you. Continue listening. Continue subscribing. Continue making the Young Entertainment family grow every single day. So, my brothers, how y'all doing today? I'm good. I'm having a uh, it's a, it's a good day. It's uh, it feels like summer outside where I'm at, and I'm really happy to be on the show, guys. I'm really happy to, to you know come back and talk talk something. We have a very special you know topic today, guys. So, mm-hmm. yeah. let's get to. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to talk about this. Play, how you doing? You feel cool? Cooler than the ice cube on it was a good day. Mm. Yes, sir. yes, sir. All right. We've got a lot to talk about today, so definitely stay tuned for that. We're going to jump straight into sports. Ladies and gentlemen, the NBA season is over. Dun, dun, dun. Meaning... It's time to talk about our favorite time of the year, the second season. It's time to talk about the playoffs. Sir. That's great for the NBA. Uh, but before we get to the playoffs, we got to talk about the play-ins that are happening. Guys, who do you guys think is taking the seven and eighth seed in each conference before we go in? On the Western side, we got Warriors versus Lakers, as well as on... Uh, we also have on the West, Spurs versus Grizzlies. On the East, Hornets versus Pacers and Wizards versus Celtics. Who's taking those games? Who's taking the eighth seed and seventh seed? Paris, we'll start with you, as you are generally the most informed person of us all. Um, yeah, I think the Lakers are moving on. Um, it is going to be a great matchup. It's always fun to see LeBron and Steph on the same court. Um, however, the Warriors do have the smallest team, so... Mm. And uh, the Lakers are, are keen to continue their good role. I think they've won five straight. Mm-hmm. They're looking pretty formidable. Obviously, they have really good defense. So I picked them to um, get into the actual playoffs itself to win their playoff bracket. <clears throat> um, in terms of the East side, sorry, uh, Spurs and Grizzlies. Um, I know Pop's there, but the Grizzlies have a, a lot of good firepower, good young core. So I kind of feel the Grizzlies are, are in on that side. Right. It's going to be a good fun one. All right. Uh, Rudy, you have an opinion? Rudy, what are your thoughts? Are you gonna who are you picking to get into the Western Conference in the NBA play in tournament? Um I'm gonna say it's gonna be a close game versus the Lakers versus the Warriors, but the Lakers do etch it out. Um I like I feel like the Lakers would be the strongest seventh seed in NBA history, basically. And in that, like, they're not a real seven seed. Like, mm. in reality, if this had been a longer 82-game season, hadn't started in December, um, it wasn't as compact as they normally would have, they would have been able to climb back up in the standings at this point, right? And then probably end up with a third seed or second seed, if anything, right? Now, uh, and they mostly got affected by injury. So um, they'll definitely, I feel they'll beat the Warrior, but it'll be a good game. But you're obviously going to be in the game seven mode with Steph Curry and uh, yeah, with Steph Curry on the floor, right? He can have a 50 point night, right? And make it a long night for y'all, so. Any night, he can have a 50 point night. Any night, right? Um, he also shout out to him being the, to winning the scoring title and quite possibly the MVP uh, for this year. Um, and then for the Grizzlies versus the Spurs, I'm kind of seeing the Grizzlies only because hmm, um, only out of youthful exuberance, they'll win. Um, if, you know, when you're really young, you don't know what you're doing. So you kind of luck your way through, right? Yeah. It's just because this is normal, right? So I feel like that's kind of that, right? John Morant doesn't know what the pressure of the playoffs is. So he could easily have a spectacular game like he can flame out. So, um, yeah, so I'm putting all of it on John Morant, depending on how he plays. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my prediction for the point in games. 
Um, what about you, Ryan? My final predictions for the playing games, I'm going to stick with all of you guys. Lakers are going to take it, um, mainly because I believe that the biggest fault that the Stephen Curry Warriors have had uh, this season, and frankly, every season since 2015, has been rebounding, and that is something that the Lakers do in spades. Steph Curry is an amazing player. Uh, what makes around what six three pointers per game at this point? Uh, our, he, I did the math not too long ago. He accounted for almost what 30, 33 percent of Golden State Warriors threes. Great stat, amazing player. But if you shut him down with a half decent defender, uh, it's going to be a tough night for Golden State. Uh, and when it comes to the Spurs Grizzlies. <laughs> Game. I love this rivalry because it's the most one-sided rivalry in the NBA bar none. I'm going to have to take the Spurs on this one. Veteran coaching. Oh, DeMar has been here. DeMar has been in tough situations in the playoffs before. And frankly, it's not the ghost of LeBron James. So it is more than doable for him. In the Eastern Conference, I'm going to give my picks right now and then I'm going to let my brother Parsa go at it. Uh, when it comes to the Celtics, uh, Celtics Wizards, as much as I love Russell Westbrook and what he's been able to accomplish, I have to give it to the Celtics, and it will be a tight game. Hornets, Pacers, Pacers take it quick time. It's going to be a nice little smack thing, and we're never going to talk about the Hornets again. Uh, <laughs> that's my call. Paris, right, so what about you? Yeah, I, I feel the I feel the Pacers for sure. That, that's no question. I don't think um, the Hornets have enough – uh, you know, like veteran experience on a team and just, you know, playing with like a, a huge ferocity. But uh, on the other hand, I, I I would pick the Celtics. I think everybody's right to pick the Celtics. But I'm going to go on a whim here and say Washington. Mm. I feel like Bradley Beal's going to reach another level. And I feel like the desperation and, you know, just surprise that these guys have. I mean, they're also playing a Boston team that hasn't looked great on the defensive end against one of the faster point guards in the league. They just don't look good on defense, period. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I will I will go on a win, and I hope the Wizards can make us a surprise and give, put some respect on Russell's name. All right. Now, I w- these, these two matchups are really interesting. And for either the Pacers or the Hornets, it's a coming out port party for either Michael Brogdon – Right, and I'm putting on Michael Brogdon, yeah, or um, uh, Terry Rozier slash uh, Gordon Hayward and Bridges. This is and Brid- mm-hmm. like I'm just saying it's a coming out party for whoever wins. Ah, I see. Right, so yeah. it is a statement. It is to say, okay, cool, we got in the playing game, but next year we're going to be a tough out. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. so. Right, the whether you're talking about the Pacers, whether you're talking about the Hornets, that's what I'm truly seeing. If I'm going to watch that game to see who's going to make that next step to push mm-hmm. themselves maybe to a fifth seed next year or fourth seed next year, right? Because whoever wins is never is never going to not uh, see that. Now the second team, whether you're talking about the Wizards or you're talking about the Celtics, the Wiz- the Wizards, it is a surprise that they're here. Actually, in both cases. <laughs> Both teams are here. Both right. If you had told me at the beginning of the season that the Celtics would find themselves in the play in game, I would have been like, Are you crazy? Seriously? Yeah. Right. And if you had told me once again that the Wizards would find themselves in the play in game, I would be like, Are you serious? Are you crazy? <laughs> and the reason why are two differently. The Wizards, I had no expectation for them to play as well as they have. I'm not saying they're playing perfect but they're playing uh with great better heart than, better than right yeah. huh better than how the year started exactly oh, definitely right? and they did have a lot of injuries and stuff but yeah. i never thought they could get, get back or get them put themselves in position when now you're talking about the celtics at a certain point um i feel like the celtics and this season will probably prove me right if they lose this play-in game they have to make the very tough decision of what's the point of having a, a bunch of talent if we don't have talent that works together. 
Mm. Year after year, they keep dropping one or two guys to try and make see what works, what doesn't. At the end of the day, pick your superstar, give him a team around him. It's what's worked in the NBA, right? You having like having all of these guys that can play really good basketball but can't play cohesively together doesn't make sense, right? And you are wasting both the players talent and the time for you to figure it out right because I always tell people it's like the biggest the reason why uh, LeBron left Cleveland was because they didn't he realized they didn't have enough time to figure it out he was going to be 20 he's going to be what he left there he was like what 26 27 right 30 was right around the corner once you hit 30 you haven't won a ring the pressure is crazy ask Mm. Russell Westbrook ask Chris Paul ask Charles Barkley Carl Malone, right? So that's what I'm saying. Even ringless, though these kids ringless, are young, ringless, ringless. Okay, just make sense. no. But think, think, think about it that way. I don't want guys like um, you forgot any player who's played on the Bulls in the past twenty years. That's true, but no, I don't want. Sorry, I, I have to take my one shot at you by, per episode, Price. I love you, my brother. But the I, <laughs> I told you, I told you the Bulls wouldn't make it. <laughs> no, but but but. To be honest, I've always, I've said this, Zach Levine, I don't know what his situation is, but, bro, he's got to find himself in a better spot, bro. <laughs> I, I know he's been moved around, whatever. Around. Zach Man, Levine? Like, give it a year. Give it give it a year, a no, full no, year. Bro, to be, uh, let's, let's be honest. Let's be honest here, okay? If Zach Levine was on a good team, he'd be an all-star. You be he'd honest. Be- you be he was an all-star this year. You be honest. No, no, no. He wouldn't be an, uh, no, you would this year, no, no. This year, he was an I all-star want, because I the coaches that, want, voted him in. No, no. I, I feel listen, I feel like he like he would be an all-star and then like the world would know his name. Because he is that good. You watch him play, you're like, this guy, this guy can ball. Right? There is no way. Like Zach Levine. Like, I almost wanted to either go to Toronto, mostly because, you know, T.O. the block, you know what it is, and and the Lakers, right? Like, go somewhere where you will be a number one guy, or if you're not going to be a number one guy on a good team, be a number two or number three on a great team, win some rings, right? Because I said, and like I keep telling, like I always tell people, I was just like, um, you can only play basketball for so long, right? And even the like the level Zach Levine is playing at, how long can you honestly sustain that? Can you say you'll play like that for 10 years? Pars, I okay, play, I kind of understand your point. I look at Pars, Pars, you know, you're ahead of your field, you're doing great in your field. And you could theoretically do great in your field for the next 20 years. Dude, he's only 26, man. He's 26. Bro, but, you guys are acting like he's 30. Bro, listen. listen. But he's also he's already a number one option. He's the number one team. option, but he's already had the team is not built to play playoff games. They went and got Vucevic and Daniel Tice this year, late in the season. No ring and barely has ever touched the playoffs. Right, so but all three of them no, together but- got to figure this out. Artyas has a plan. Artyas, the GM, has a plan. No, but I'm just saying. Think, yeah, but like, how long do they have for that plan to work? Because the, it has like to work the- by next year. If they're not in the playoffs by next year, then you blow the team up. They let mm-hmm. you let you tell Zach to go. No, oh, no, you got like, and that's what I'm saying. For a guy like Zach, because think about it, we always say, "Oh, he's just 26." We're thinking about it like us 26, right? But us 26 is different. I can lit- I'm can i literally going to work in an office for the next, what, 30 years? I'll be fine. He, you know how many years he has in the office? If he's lucky, yeah. seven. Yeah, yeah, seven. I was going to say 30. He has still a 35 after that. After that so. But, right, I'm but saying, like, the reason why Kemba saying, is a lucky career, right, compared to... Um, but to here's Mignon. the thing, though. He's already had knee surgery. Yeah, okay. he was shipped out from Minnesota and he was injured with his knee. I think it was MCL or ACL, one of the two. Okay, so that might shorten his span. If I was him, I'd be looking, Look, I need to get that bread, I need to get that championship and the rewards, get myself into the Hall of Fame. Like, 
like guys like Chris Webber, Grant. Don't get me started on that one. Uh, guys like we're going to talk about it later. Ryan has a lot of beef with Chris Webber. Yeah, we're going to talk about it later. Don't get me. <laughs> All right, no. let's talk about the one through five seeds then. All right, one through five seeds. Frankly, uh, let's get at it. NBA playoffs 2021. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It's crazy out here uh, in the Black Jack Pack. So, the number one seed hasn't exactly been decided, but let's say for the West, it's going to be Utah versus L.A. What's your picks? Because I'm taking LA. I'm taking L.A. in five. I love Utah, but without Donovan Mitchell, there ain't no goodness or gracious way they're, they're passing the first round. Yeah, and, and, and the thing depends. is, I've said this. This is I that's what I said, like the Lakers are the, the strongest seven seed of all time. <laughs> like they might all the way they might end up going all the way to a championship being the seven seed. All right. D- uh down to the west, the four or five game. Clippers, Dallas. What's your pick? Parse. Dallas. Yeah, I picked the Clippers for sure. It's not a question. I'm picking- oh, no, he's got to pick the Clippers. Oh, he's got to after last year. Never let that man. Live. No, 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 he, no. He he put he he said that this year they were gonna do it. Me, I'm ready to laugh in his face again, so bro. I'm calling and you first of all, Utah doesn't have to play the Lakers. Well, no. If the Lakers win this first game, they're facing uh, Phoenix. Phoenix. Oh, they're facing Phoenix. Okay. Yeah. My apologies. Unless something happened and Utah lost again. No, I'm pretty sure if they play Phoenix. Okay. So. Utah would have to face either Memphis or San Antonio, but we all said, let's say Memphis makes it. Utah versus Memphis. I have Utah winning that series, even if Donovan's not around. No, give it- versus Memphis? No way. I'll say Memphis I, and As Senate. much as I, I like the idea of Utah winning, I don't think they got it in them like that. Um, I think they're about to get their heart ripped out by John Morant because I feel John, like, that's what I said. If John Moran beats the Spurs, he'll beat the Utah Jazz because he's. I'm sorry, but he's got a little bit of a killer in him, and we're about to see a how much bit? of a killer he is. It, if not more. Now nah, that man, that man is definitively one of the dangerous young stars of the league. You gotta uh, get calls, and you, and and that's what I'm saying. I don't. Do, it's do a man. coming out party. So. You know, even a job, even if um <clears throat> Donovan's not there, you know, you got the veteranship of Conley, you got Rudy there, and you know, you got guys off the bench, you got guys playing their roles. Clark's yeah, but there. so veteranship does matter. Getting the calls matter. If you're one seed, you're gonna get the calls more. It's just that simple. Mm-hmm. They may need to, he may need to go bro, for a couple more growing pains before he starts winning playoff playoff uh, pictures. No, uh, well, I'm gonna say this. Problem <clears> is <throat> when you don't have a score like Donovan, who's the main focal point of your offense. Scoring becomes tougher. Granted, in, in the playoffs, it is easier to score. But at the and same what, time... Memphis is going to make it tougher defensively? I'd love to No, see. no, no. No, no. I'm just saying... I'm just saying, who are they going to give the ball to to get them a bucket if they need it? Mm, right. Are you... You're going to you're gonna bank it on Mike Conley? Right, like that's, go I'm not saying he... I'm saying, like, you're going to... Is, is he going to do that for four straight games? Because I'm no, not... None of these games are going to be... Are going to be a blowout. I'm calling it. Anyways, Phoenix, Lakers. I'll give it to the Lakers. Yeah, I'll give it to the Lakers too. In six Uh, games. And I'm going to be very, very disappointed. I'm going to say, look, Chris, Paul, you should have gone to the Lakers. Why do you keep saying six games? Oh, yeah, yeah, that was six games. I'm like, damn, isn't it the best of seven? Okay. No, it's it's the best of seven, but I'm saying they're winning in six. Uh, Yeah, yeah, winning in six games. But everybody's in contestants. The Lakers are beating the Phoenix Suns. You're not going to pair I think up. you only get Phoenix one game. I'd say they beat them in five. If everybody's <laughs> healthy on the Lakers. Just because, again, this is a Phoenix team. And if we're going based on history, you know, they're going to get sunned by the Lakers. What we've seen from the Lakers versus Phoenix this season is that the Lakers have their number. You can have yeah. all the scoring you want with, um, with Devin on the court. But when it comes to crunch time, him and Chris are going to have a little bit of an issue getting shot off. Mm-hmm. Defense well, and, does and, tighten up. The Lakers have yeah. a good way of, of, of silencing scores and getting the rebound. Well, I mean, yeah, and people are also forgetting. You ha- look, Think about how tall this lineup is. Andre Derman, uh, AD, 
Braun, Montrez, and possibly Kuzma. Right? As as a five. As a five man. That's that's a big team. Right? <laughs> Do they have no, and that's the thing, that's a real lineup that they can use versus Phoenix. And that's definitely gonna give Phoenix fits, right? Mm-hmm. Because there's only so much speed that you can have, right? Like you can only move so horizontally and vertically so fast. But I love DeAndre. Ayton. Gotta jump. I think he is a, a, a really good young talent coming up. DeAndre Ayton is definitely gonna be getting calls and stuff in the future. But you're putting up against AD. You're not getting the calls. I'm sorry, you're not. <laughs> and you're, you're just you're you're not you're not big enough. You're just not. You're not big enough. And and you might not even get AJ might not even be the one to get the assignment. It might be German, who's also a great defender. So it's not like you're you're sitting here and you're not gonna guard like and the thing is Aiden has to guard them on the other end too. Mm. Like, even, even if Devin has an off night and Aiden goes, you know, 20 and 12 or 20 and 11, you know, has a monster game, 25 and, and 14. It's not enough, dude. Yo, no, 80's giving you a soft 25. Even yeah. if Drummond goes 10 and 10 and 15, that's still and enough. And Schroeder, Schroeder is, you know, I'm, <laughs> I feel like the Lakers, the Lakers have a really deep and more volatile bench than people are giving them credit for. Yeah, I'm, the right? bench is going to drop 30, 40. Young. The bench is going to drop 30, 40. As much as the Lakers looked very weak without their two superstars, but who wouldn't look week without a team that was literally constructed for two superstars right like so for me um yeah that matchup is gonna be super interesting and i kind of i kind of hope that uh chris ball at least looks good in it because it would just it would just suck for him to look bad in that in that playoff matchup all right we'll get to our last matchup on the western conference for the first round denver portland two great teams third and sixth seed Look, I'm going to say it. this is, in my opinion, this is Carmelo's last ride. Denver wins it in six. Six games. I wouldn't you know be so crazy? quick to write Denver off. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be so quick to write Portland off because if I remember correctly, he also has that season-ending injury, right? Yeah. yeah. So for me, I'm, I'm picking Portland. I'm picking Portland, too. Yeah. Um, the Joker is a anything, different beast, a lot ladies of people- and gentlemen. No, no, I'm just saying Dame Litter, crunch time. <laughs> Dame. Uh, I just feel they don't close out games very well. I personally don't think they close out games very well. I'll be honest. Apart from Dame being Dame, I just don't feel they have the right sequencing. At well, they're playing games. in a very and tough you, Western Conference. Right? And do you know what the Den- two of the smaller and, guys? And do you know what the Denver Nuggets have in spades? The ability to close games. They yeah. close out people in the playoffs. That's their job. They don't, care if they're down job. <laughs> they don't care. No, they have a three well, one. They don't care if they're up three one. They're like, oh, let's go to the series. Bet. <laughs> no, th- that's the thing. I feel like the the thing about Denver, um, the Jamal Murray loss is really big, but it is. And um, as much as I said, it is John Morant's or Michael Brogdon or Terry Rozier's coming out party. If Michael Porter Jr. wants to be taken seriously in this league, he better step up. That's the only way they he carries the load that Jamal Murray would have scoring wise at least. And he can. Passing, he can def. I believe in him. Can do. I watched this kid in college. I was a big fan of him, and I, I he can do it. He's a natural ability scorer. He just doesn't have. He needs to have the confidence. He needs the green light from the coach, not just the yeah you can shoot. I'm talking about the yo, take us home. That type of confidence from your coach that will ignite the fire in him that's the fire he had when he was playing in college but i will say no, this we're talking about a portland team that went to the western conference finals two years ago yeah and more or less that team is all the way back so they can make a deep run yeah and i absolutely understand that um let's get on to the next round we've got utah versus dallas who you guys got it oh first of all i said the clippers in Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. Let's say Dallas did get by the Clippers, and I would pick Dallas to win that series. But I think the Clippers are winning that series, and they're going to win the next one and go to the Western Conference Finals. I, I don't see the Clippers doing it. I, and the reason why is because they fit guarding Luca and uh, KCP. They just don't have the bodies for it. 
even and they're even smaller than they were last year, right? If the if they go big as in the, in the Mavericks, I don't think that they honestly have the necessary manpower to to bully them and get the boards and get the easy buckets. And the thing is, I said this: Luca is a cerebral player and he plays with angles. He's seen how Paul George uh, and all of those guys want to guard him last year in the playoffs. I don't think he didn't sit there and study them all summer. I think he studied them all summer, and he knows what they he knows what they would want to do to him, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's going to be as easy as last time. And they already had a hard time the first time, right? So now it's going to be like, can the Mavericks guard the Clippers enough? Can the Mavericks um, score enough, right, against the Clippers? And then when it comes, if they come out versus Utah. I just want I would love to see the Europeans go at it. I honestly yeah. Rudy Gobert European... versus Luka Doncic, I'd love to see that happen. Parse, your feel? Yeah, man. I, I, I honestly think the Clippers have to go either way. Um I think just again, two veteran wing players. Um Rondo's there, uh the ability to feel out. And although they may not be a great closing out team this season, they still have the presence and the fear that they can instill. That's all. All right. So we lead off to a Western Conference semifinals, like a matchup, Portland versus the Lakers. You guys won a majority. So who takes it? I'm saying Lakers in five. I'm yeah, five. Lakers in five again. No okay. contest. Last year. Again, the problem with the team is that Portland plays a really, really tough ship. They run a really tight ship. They're a great team to play against, but they don't have the size and to, to contain AD. Even yeah. if they do everything, and you saw the traps they made on LeBron, they made him pass the ball to double teams. They made the he, they made him pass the ball into situations where they had to throw in late clock situations. They did a great job defensively last year, but the problem was they have no answer for AD. And again, and, then, and, and the year, thing is. The Lakers, the I feel like the Lakers did two things. They got a little bit, they got their their playmakers became better shooters, which makes it even tougher. Because like if a guy like Caruso is going to hit forty percent, and he can make drop assists and dimes, you're it's a problem. Because if LeBron passes him the ball, he's not as a great playmaker as LeBron, but you got another playmaker who then can now shoot or make a play for somebody down low or for another three. So now you keep the rotations going and going and going. And I am like anybody who's played basketball at any level, by that third or fourth rotation, it's, it's unless you guys are an amazing team and you know, they're actually playing on a string, it's already broken down. It's a wide open three and that's it. So we get to our Western Conference Finals. So you guys are basically saying Lakers versus Dallas. Oh, that'd be great. I would love it. Yeah, I think everybody would love it. It'd be I'm sorry. It's going to be the easiest. It might be the, the toughest series in the West for the Lakers, but it'll be the easiest one uh, to call. Because well, I- LeBron has proved time and time again that Duke, Luka's a great talent. Make no mistake. But Absolutely. He, when, when Luka t- tells, tells the, the media that I modeled my game after LeBron, I've learned from LeBron, studied LeBron, well, it's no, it's no, not a problem for LeBron to just you know take that and use it against him. So, uh, it's definitely what it is. But I said again, the Clippers are going to be there, and if the Clippers are there. We should see a fun, interesting matchup where I think the Clippers. If it's fun. the Clippers, I don't think it's as it's as fun as people would make it out to seem. And I'll say mm-hmm. this: the Rondo addition and the mantra that they should basically they switch players. Let's be honest, um, makes it a little bit more interesting. But it's like the playmaking that the um, Clippers didn't have, mm-hmm. yeah, they, they bring that back, but then they lose all of the size to counter the Lakers, right? Because now I'm saying this, how many second shot opportunities are you going to give to LeBron or AD or, or all of those guys, right? Like You can give Kuzma 8,000 so shots, okay, but everybody else. It's gonna be a problem, right? Like you can't, you can't give them second chance opportunities, and that's what you've basically given up for more playmaking. So now that playmaking better not miss, right? You've actually put more pressure on your offense to score buckets, right? Well, um, um, I can't argue with you guys there. I fully agree with you. 
and this was a chance for the Clippers to prove anything. I think if anything, it's now you guys are built to stop this team of LeBron James. Prove it. Yeah. And and the thing is, they're also not just because Kawhi had the opportunity to leave, but Paul George is gonna is 32 going on 33. Kawhi's 30 going on 31. You don't get it done this year. When are you gonna get it done? Because the Luca, the John Morants, all of those guys are coming, right? They're not gonna sit there and wait for you to win and then and start playing basketball against you. you no, know, they're they're gonna try and kill you right now. But see, here's the thing that I like and that I advise. Look, Paul George has signed for four years, and it's not looking hot. It's not looking hot for his career in terms of getting another ring. Kawhi still already got two, and already two of the okay. These these this will get into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, Kawhi's in the he, Hall. He's he's just got yeah. Weirdly enough, it is weird, but he is in the Hall of Fame. He's in the Hall. First he's, ballot Hall of Fame. Paul George, I can't say the same thing. Cannot, mm-hmm. will not, and shall not say that. Him and Chris Webber are in the same boat. Sorry, Chris Webber. I really like you as a person and as an announcer. As a player, though, you're never my type. But I digress. So let's say, for argument's sake, the Lakers make it to the, to the Western Conference, make it to the finals, for argument's sake. Um, because they're, frankly, the team to be. Yeah. Now, who would they be facing on the East is actually a lot tougher. A lot tougher to decide. So let's go about it. Uh, we had said that Indiana is going to pass as well as Boston, Washington. We weren't too really sure. But let's go. Uh, let's say Washington wins it. Um, Washington would have to face against Philadelphia. Who do, you, who do you guys have to pick here? Because it's literally a battle of two opposites. Oh, Philly. Philadelphia walks through. Or Philly. It might be a sweep. They're too big. <laughs> yeah, they're too big. Yeah. No, I, it's, it's, and the thing is, it's literally the worst matchup for them. Like, Washington is legitimately the else, worst matchup. It'd be a little bit easier, even versus the Nets. <laughs> like, like, literally... Philadelphia is the worst matchup for Washington. They are too small, um, and and their scoring is too de- like it's too much. There's too they depend too much on the interior. There's too many. Like it's literally the worst matchup for them. All right, Indy versus Brooklyn. Who takes it? Brooklyn walks over. It's gonna be a sweep. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. It's going to be a sweep. It's not 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 a question. It's Milwaukee and Miami. Yeah, I pick Milwaukee. Now. That's tough. I'm picking my huh? I'm picking Miami in six. Milwaukee got to play in the in the goodness or gracious playoffs. Miami had too many pickups this year for me to believe. No, I coming off of going to the oh, finals. No, I'm, these pickups is weird. I no, I get what you mean. Um, but they'll Hmm. I really think that it's going to be an interesting call. I would say this. It's going to be something. It's going to be a very interesting call in terms of deciding uh, who wins. However, you know, with Miami, they figured them out last year, right? Yeah. Miami did figure them out last year. Um, so it could be, you know, a bigger issue. I'm sorry, but the thing is they have a new guy, right? Milwaukee has um, Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday. Uh, They've got Drew and, Holiday. And that's and that arguably seems to be yeah, and that's an issue. Oh no, he's perfect. He's perfect for that team. It's gonna be an issue. Yeah, he's he's perfect for that team. So that's why I'm saying this. If they beat Miami, which is actually now that I'm saying it might very likely, because I on it, I love Bud, but Eric Spolstra is a mastermind. He is literally most likely the best coach in the NBA. Not like, I'm ready to give him that title. No, but I would say Greg Popovich is not either at the height of his powers. Okay. Eric Spolstra is the Understandable. best coach in the NBA. Eric Spolstra is playing 3D chess while we're all playing checkers. Checkers. <laughs> like, it's, he's, 
he will literally give you fits. Like there will always be something. He all he's almost like Bill Belichick, and then he take away your number one and number two option, and now you better be good at num- number three or else you're screwed. Um, having said that, um, I still think Milwaukee will pass narrowly in a seven game series. Yeah, nearly. And yeah. and I even said this: Milwaukee has the best chance of beating Brooklyn. Don't worry, we'll get to that. New York Knicks, Atlanta. Who takes it? Both of them. Both of them got forty-one and thirty-one in the series. I'm picking New York. I'm picking New York. I never thought I'd say that, but you know what? New York let's effect. let's make it a clean sweep in New York. Um, but the only problem with that, I don't want to deal with New York Knicks fans that are gonna be think they're gonna win next year oh, because no. they won a series. Oh no! Don't worry. <laughs> So the person they're meeting up with next is Philadelphia. Who you guys got? New York or Philly? Philly. 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 A Philly in a sweep. No, I, not a sweep. Yeah. No, I'm saying Philly in a sweep. It'd be fine. Why? It's because there's no body on that team who's going to guard Ben Simmons. Who do you put? Derrick Rose is going to fight. Okay, Derrick Rose is going to fight at 6'1 versus 6'8. 6'8, 270 pounds. Nah, man, it's a different beast. This guy was doing this against seven footers. What do you mean? He's uh, he's experienced with these layups, man. He's experienced. I'll get people you po- trouble. And all you that. post up, Look. yeah, yeah, but but yeah. Is Ben hitting ben threes? Simmons yet? is the best defender in the NBA. Is he yes. hitting threes yet? Not yet, but that man just needs to drive, 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 drive. <laughs> no, but that's, that's the thing. It's like people really act. I'm I'm not saying that him expanding his range when is it going to be important as he gets older. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that what he's been able to do, like him, he's scoring 17, 18 points a night, and everybody in the goddamn planet knows he can't make a three. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone and their mother knows. Like think about that. He's playing. He's like he is playing in the NBA versus other professionals. The entire think about that logic. That means he is fairly good at what he does. Right. And the worst part is, I think he's a better three-point shooter with his right hand, and he's left-handed. Well, it might yeah. be that. There's certain left, yeah, there's certain, there's certain people that are actually left-handed, but they shoot with the right, right? So, like so LeBron. Way, it's going to be a fun series to watch New York leave, and I can get New York fans to stop texting and tweeting me, telling me that they're going to win the chip. Thank God. Brooklyn, Milwaukee, what's your pick? My pick... This is really- this is where we get a little, little tense here. Is the Bucks in six? If they Whoa. beat Miami, they beat Brooklyn. And my reasoning is so simple, it will hurt. If there's one thing the Nets have proven to me this year, is that those three guys that this team is built around cannot stay healthy for 16 straight games. When one leaves, that entire team crumbles. They can't play basketball. They cannot play basketball. They don't know how to shoot a basketball. They barely understand how a pass works. All the guys need to do is... I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Brooklyn can't... Brooklyn's best chance of winning is to outscore their opponents. Period. And Milwaukee has a good enough defense overall that they might hold them down 10 to 10 to 15 points off to their usual and be able to score a little like a little bit more a lot more so for me personally i just feel that Milwaukee has both the size the speed and the desire to be Brooklyn um their games have always been close mm-hmm. um i feel like Milwaukee, if Milwaukee wants to be the guy, the group in the the team in the East to fear, they have to beat Brooklyn. Because I said this, if Brooklyn gets them once, it's game over. They'll never recover. Year after year, Brooklyn will be their um the they'll be Raptors. their no, no, they'll be they'll almost be like the new, not even the new Raptors, they'll be like uh how what the Celtics were for LeBron. Yeah. Right. So Right, so in order to destroy that dynamic, the the they have to beat the Nets this year. They have to. All right. So, what about you? What's your pick? They can do what they do what they've been doing in the season. 
just outscore opponents. I pick the Nets. Mm. I see. Your I think these guys are going to stay healthy, and I think if you talk a lot in the media, Kyrie, you better be about that action in the media, Kyrie. So bring it on the court. <laughs> Is that basketball not the most important thing on your mind? But bro, you you better be you better be making buckets when you're on the court. That. Basketball is not um, the important thing on your mind. Isn't that how you feed your family? But that should be a, an important thing on your mind every so often. Yeah, but think about it. No, no. He said normally he is focused 100%. Let me not, let's not misquote him. But just with everything going on with uh, Palestine and Israel right now, that and, and ju- injustice is being faced all around the world. Um, yeah, he just... Um, he just like he, he couldn't focus about it the same way he usually does, but yes, okay. Eastern Conference Finals, let's talk about it. Who's got it? I'm gonna pick Milwaukee to make it out of the faster. They're gonna beat Philly, that's my call. I'm gonna stand by that, and I hope to not be completely flabbergasted by the end of the series by the amount of turnovers that both of these teams will commit. Weirdly enough, oh, Whew. Philly, Philly versus Milwaukee. Uh, Paris, Paris. While Rudy is thinking, tell us what you think. Yeah, Philly can't win. <laughs> so, oh, it's 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 Brooklyn going to the finals. Uh, if Milwaukee pulls it out, I say I would honestly, I would, I would. Beyond Milwaukee should be able to beat Philly. Um, again, it's that rent freeness in your head, you know, and be, you know, knowing that, hey, you know, when we when Butler was playing with you, you couldn't get over the Raptors. Well, guess what? Similar situation right now. I don't think I think you guys are in your own heads and can't get the job done. Mm. Don't have faith that they have the mental ability to stay focused and to have that drive to destroy a really competitive team. So all fun and games during the season but I don't think they can do it in a seven-game series of this magnitude. So um, I trust whoever's in the 3-2 seat to go to the finals and show what they can do against Lakers, Clippers, whoever's there. Okay, so I, I the reason why I'm picking Philly, if it's Philly versus Milwaukee, I give it to Philly. If it's Brooklyn versus Philly, I'm giving it to Brooklyn. Um, but I'm not giving it to Brooklyn. And I would say this, it all depends on the Joel Embiid situation. If Joel Embiid proves himself to be the most dominant big man since Shaq, oh, well, let, let, yeah, because he's capable. I said him and AD are the only two capable of being as dominant as Shaquille O'Neal. And I'm saying this live and on the air. Somebody come get at me if you want to. You know where I am. If he's not, if they, if he doesn't play like that, then Philly has no hope at beating them. Because doesn't. let's be honest, KD doesn't want to guard him. No one like, on that team wants to guard, guard him. him. No one on that team exactly. wants to play defense. But I'm yeah, yeah they're gonna, but like they're gonna let MB get 40 and then try to try to figure everything out. I'll but bro, it. I've always said this. Okay, listen, and I love I know we everybody loves analysts analytics. Joel Embiid probably finishes at the rim at a nice clip of 60%, right? Even if you shoot threes, his twos will catch up faster than your threes. Even the craziest analytics will prove me right. So that's what I'm saying. If he, that's why I said, as much as people are like, oh, well, the Lakers, like the Shaq Lakers could never be team today. I'm like, yeah, because Shaq can literally score 40 on them without trying. It's not – I'm not saying it's not and hard. It up. It's, I'm not saying it's not <laughs> hard to do this, but when you're the tallest person on the court and arguably the strongest <laughs> too, it's a little easier By far. to do this. <laughs> to do this. <laughs> on a regular basis. Just keep it the motion. And, we're scared, and if that doesn't work, you take it, and then you go, pow. Yay. <laughs> No, but that's why I said, like, how many of those do you think he's going to miss? Like, that's why I said, even if they let Embiid go for 40, 
you know Simmons is going to get at least, let's say, 15, 20. Then you've got Tobias Harris. Like, then you've got Danny um, Green and Seth Curry. Danny like, Green will maybe hit a couple of threes. Like, knowing him, it's, he's definitely going to hit that's threes. That's a factor right there. I think if Danny Green and Seth both get each 10 points, that's a problem. Because then you have to add in the bench is getting 30. So that, yeah. that's where that's where the issue is. <laughs> mm-hmm. But where Boston's like, now in a slugfest, and it's like they can't keep up with Embiid scoring easily while they're in a slugfest. Because you're not going to get it. Every single they hate you. But I, and I said this, that's why I'm saying Milwaukee, Philly, and the Nets are a lot more comparable than people think. And I said this, and I'm saying this right now. All three of those teams need to be get to the finals. Because if they don't get to the finals, it's going to create a mess like for them in the offseason. Mm, Their team absolutely. is going to get broken up. Oh, those right? teams are definitely going to get broken up. Like, you know, like, the thing is, with, Brook- with Brooklyn, so it's be all issue. three guys are blamed guys. They're not, like, they, they're not, they don't have the right headspace to, to, for them not uh, to, for them to actually win. And mm. That's my problem with them. Right? Can you do this? Can you stay focused enough? Can you realize that the blame is on all of you guys enough for you guys to win. If if they can't do that, they will lose and it will be embarrassing. Oh, It'll let me take out. Clippers. Parts, go ahead. I was going to talk about the, fi- the NBA Finals at this point. I-, I wanted to go and say that the East side is winning the NBA Finals this year. Mm. If, it comes if, out the East. if Milwaukee comes out of the East, Lakers win in six. If uh, Philly comes out of the East, Lakers win in four. It's a sweep. I said it. A sweep in the NBA Finals. And if Brooklyn comes out, it's going to be a slugfest and one of the greatest Game 7 series we have ever seen. But the Lakers win it. In OT. In overtime. Stop dreaming. Stop dreaming. By simple, simple math, if you can't stay healthy, you can't play the game of basketball. If you cannot remain healthy for 16 games, you will not be winning the NBA championship. I don't care if Blake Griffin's on your team because he's injury prone. I don't care if DeAndre Jordan is on your team because he's injury prone. I don't care if it's Kyrie or Kevin Durant because they're both injury prone. The only person on that team who can arguably stay for 16 straight games is James Harden, and he's gained a lot of weight. I, sorry, it's true. His conditioning has definitely <laughs> no, no. not been the same as it's been in previous years, which is a whole other issue I need to ask. How bad was it in Houston for you to legitimately destroy your own conditioning? But I digress. No, no, I, w- I want to say this about – the whole James Harden situation is this. I feel like James Harden is a great point guard, and he's the only reason why that team semi-functions. Um, I'm saying the problem is everybody is scared of James Harden in the clutch and not scared as in, like, they fear him. They, they Like, it actually scares him. Like, I've never seen him play well in the clutch. He beat Spurs one time. When? Bro, what? It, was like two years. it was when they went to the Western Conference Finals against Warriors and lost. Before that, they had to play a seven-game series with uh, Spurs, man. Yeah, Shot over Ginobili, yeah. got it in. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Running in the game, y'all we're forget down three two. Y'all we're forget. down three two. <laughs> no, no, I he's read, but yeah, we're talking about one instance. How many and how many playoff flameouts can that? Can I name in on oh in yeah, there's a good seven or eight. There's a good <laughs> like, but I was what? just saying you can't really write them off, write them off, you know. That I remember, <laughs> James. If you're listening, James, I remember. <laughs> it, listen, James, if you're listening, I know I just criticized you, but would you mind throwing up the black jack pop cock the young entertainment <laughs> up? You know, help 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 some young brothers get get, get a little get a little notoriety. But uh, actually, I was joking, James Hardy. You know it's all love. I respect you as a player. I actually modeled a little bit of my game around you, but it's all love. Congratulations. No matter okay. what, if you made it, leave me alone. <laughs> Y'all act it up right now. Y'all act um, it up. 
Thank you. Congratulations to all the teams that made it to the playoffs. To all the teams, including my own, that did not make it to it the better playoffs. Be on we'll NBA see you UK. next year. Yeah. Look, um, I've been so happy to do this prediction video with my brothers out here. Clay, thank you for coming on to the show. Parts, thank you for coming on to the show. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Young Entertainment. Continue following us on Spotify and everywhere else you're listening to us. Thank you so much for all your support. Continue supporting the nation. Yeah, the nation. And we'll gladly see you all sooner than later on the Blackjack Pack here on Young Entertainment. Peace. Peace.